Hey everybody, Hunter back again from Showtime Studios. Going to start on a new um, tutorial series here. Um, I've had several requests come up for uh, different how-tos. And the first one we're going to work on is one I've done before. Um, but I'm going to update the videos on that. And it'll be on the salt technique. And I have um, my slammer build that I've done, the Mobius Ford pickup here. And just to give you a quick idea of the technique we're going to be doing, you can see on the hood there, the roof, um, and then we'll show the sides of it here. You can see where the paint is flaked away, and you can see the underlying either primer or paint colors. Um, I did several different uh, base colors on this particular model. Um, so that's what we're going to be working on. Uh, a lot of people say that it's very time consuming and that can be the case, but I've uh, come up with a technique that goes pretty quickly and um, it works. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on this thing. What we're going to be using is actually uh, a little kit uh, that Sandy was working on for the 24 hour build. Um, this is called the turtle, and we're just going to be using this as our our platform for the demonstration here. Um, the back of this is in gray primer. Uh, the front of it is in a red primer, and the actual primer that I'm using on it is the Napa color line. Um, I like the lacquer primers, but, you know, whatever primer you want to use, um, if that's the uh, look that you're going for, and we'll talk about that a little bit as we go along. Um, you can use just about any primer as long as it's, you know, nice and dry. That's why I like the lacquers because they dry real fast. Um, but I did it, uh, with the gray. She had it originally done in gray and I went ahead and sprayed this just a little bit ago, the red on it, uh, just to give you an idea of what the same colors look like with, um, different color undercoats showing through. So, um, that's what we're going to be using now to jump into, uh, the materials we're going to be using it's actually pretty simple like i say you start off with um either your primer or your paint color you can also do this technique with paint um so like say you wanted to have a say a red down on here um like you know a bright red or whatever um you could do that and then you can go and do the salt technique and then do your top color on top of that so you want to start out with either you know your primer or your paint uh, next up, we're going to have the salt itself, um, which is nothing more than just regular table salt. Um, I don't like the real coarse salt. I think it uh, gets out of scale in, in uh, 124th, 125th scale. So I tend to stay with just the uh, table salt. So I've got that in a shaker here. Uh, we have a little bit of water in a cup. Uh, with about a drop or two of um, dishwashing liquid in there and stirred it around with a uh, wider brush and I dropped the dishwashing liquid in there because it helps with surface tension um, it helps you know the water go where you want it to go on the model when we get to that step uh, next up you want to have um, you know a couple different size brushes if you're doing smaller spots um, you know you can use a round brush like this um, if you want to do a wider, you know, overall, like I did on the hood of the Ford, uh, you can use the wider brushes. So, you know, whatever brush works for you the best, or if you have a favorite or whatever, just use that. But I tend to use several different, you know, types of brushes and shapes, uh, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, then you're going to need your top color. And this is where I, the technique that I've learned that you can do it pretty quickly. Um, this is the, of course, uh, Tamiya, um, the acrylics in the bottle. And this works very well. It dries very quickly for this process um, if you're using an airbrush. And let me make note of that. Everything that we're going to be doing here, other than the primer that I sprayed on out of that can, will be airbrush work. And that's um, how I get the results as quick as I do. So we're going to be using a medium blue and a desert yellow uh, just for demonstration. And next up, we're going to be using a hairdryer. And this is the one thing that does cut the time way down. And I'll show you what to look for when we get to that stage. And uh, it'll tell you whether it's dry or not. 
So what we're going to do is go ahead and get started here. We're going to take our, um, our model that we're working with, and we're going to take the water and bring over here. And I'm just going to use one of my medium wide brushes here. And we're going to put some, get some water on the brush here. And what you want to do is, you know, wherever you want it to be rusty, if you want an overall rust on it, um, you know, a pink flaking away, uh, this is not really a rust technique. What this is, is more of a peeling paint technique. So remember that also. But depending on what color that you put underneath, um, you can simulate rust uh, pretty, pretty realistically doing it this way. So we're just going to go in here and we're going to put a little bit of water on uh, just in certain spots. Um, we're not going to, you know, do anything elaborate here. Um, so we're going to put a little bit on the brown. Uh, we'll keep it more up on top here so it shows up better on the camera. Um, but as you can see, I'm just kind of putting some water down. And nothing difficult about it at all. Just... You know, wherever you want your, your underlying color to show through is where you want to put the water. And like I say, you can do it overall. So now we're going to take a little bit of the salt that's in the shaker. And this will make a mess. So, you know, be prepared to uh, clean up your, your workstation a little bit. So all I did was just drop the salt on there. And you can see, see if we can get the camera to focus here on it. There you go. That's what it looks like with the salt on it. And I'll just shake it sometimes like that, or, you know, you can take it and actually tap your finger on the side of the, of the model and get the excess off. And as I'm doing this technique, I usually don't wipe this stuff up until, you know, I'm done with everything. But I'm just kind of wiping this over here out of the way right now. So next, we're going to go ahead and get a little bit of our water, and we're going to put back here on the gray sections. Uh, same technique. I'm going to do a little bit of a wider spot back here uh just to you know something a little bit different and we'll go ahead and do just a stripe across here and like i say you know wherever your water collects on the model um you know if it was if it was one to one and sitting outside uh look for areas that the water would collect uh down in your valleys and stuff and that's a real good place to do this technique um, and you can also do it, you know, just across a flat panel like this uh, to simulate the sun kind of eating away at the paint over time. So we've got some water on there. We're going to go ahead and drop a little bit of salt on it. And you can vary how much salt you put on. You can put a little bit on or, you know, actually cover up all the water that you put on the model if you want it real heavy. All right, so this is what it's looking like right now with the salt dropped on the model in a couple different areas. Now, this next step might get a little loud because I'm going to turn on the hair dryer. Now, what this does is a lot of people will stop at this point here, and they'll just leave the model set. They'll let the water evaporate. They'll let it dry, and then they'll come back and um, do the next steps. But what I like to do is when I'm doing this technique, um, I like to speed things up a little bit. So I've got the hair dryer here set on hot and we're going to turn it on and we're going to dry this water out. And hopefully you can hear me over top the, the hair dryer, but um, I don't turn it on the real fast setting because it will move the salt around and we'll blow it off the model. So you don't want that. Um, but all you're doing is just trying to go in and dry the water up. Once you see the water disappear, um, you will also notice that the salt will turn a pretty bright white color. Uh, that's what you're looking for. That means it's pretty well dry and you're good to go to the next step. We're going to go ahead and dry this up here. And with the hair dryer, it doesn't take all that long to get to dry up. So. Well, so it kind of speeds the process up a little bit. All right, we're looking pretty good there. Hopefully you can hear me over top of the hair dryer. Um, but now with everything dried up and the salt on the model, that's what it looks like.
So now we're going to move on to the next step. And that's going to be putting on, let's go with the uh, medium blue. Uh, this is going to be straight out of the bottle. Um, I'm not going to thin this any. You can if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to go straight out of the bottle. So we've got that there. And then I've, of course, got my Grex uh, Tritium Series uh, airbrush. And we're going to drop a little bit of the blue into the airbrush. And you don't need much for this. I mean, depending on the size of the model that you're doing, you don't need a, a whole lot in your airbrush because you're doing a very, very light coat. So remember that. All right, off camera here, I'm going to get my airbrush uh, set. So bear with me just a second here. Get my pattern set. And I'll show you what I'm doing off camera here. I'm just kind of testing my airbrush and... Um, I've got the pressure turned down to about 10 pounds with the uh, trigger pulled. So I'm using a very, very low pressure on this. And I just kind of um, got my pattern to look like that there. Uh, sort of random. You know, you're not spraying a um, super shiny finish here. So don't be real particular about how the airbrush is spraying. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and move in. And what this is going to simulate is this is our, our actual top paint color. So that would be your red primer. And now we're going to spray on the actual paint that they put over top of that primer. So we're going to go in here and we're just going to mist on a little bit of this blue. And like I say, this is a very, you know, when you're doing this, it's going to be a mist coat. You don't want a whole lot of buildup. Um, that's going to create a lot, a lot of problems for you later on. So keep this very light. Like I say, I've got the airbrush turned way down, so I'm not putting a whole lot of paint on the model, even though it may look that way. Um, but we're going to go ahead and make sure you get all your salt covered up. And what I like to do is, you know, as you're spraying, um, you can kind of work around the salt uh, if you want to. If you just want to, you know, create a very, um, I don't know what you would actually call it, the effect that I'm, that I'm trying to think of. But you can just do a single pass over top of your salt also. And it does give you a little bit different technique. So whichever way you want to spray it, just make sure you keep it light. And we're going to spray a little bit of this out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the, um, whatever color we picked over here, the desert yellow. I'm going to put that right on top of what's in the airbrush here. And then we're going to spray these parts back here. So we're going to go ahead and lay the airbrush down there. And like I say, this is going to be straight out of the bottle also. This is a XF59 Desert Yellow. If I can get it open here. And we're going to put a little bit of that in the airbrush. And like I say, as you noticed, I, I dumped that right on top of the blue that's in there. You can clean the airbrush out if you want to. Um, or you can dump right over top of it and have kind of a mixture of the two colors. So I'm going to pull the trigger now. Uh, very lightly and it's going to kind of mix those two colors together a little bit uh, Same settings on the airbrush nothing changed there and we're going to go ahead and Start spraying down Actually what I need to do here hang on just a second We're going to go ahead and turn the airbrush up a little bit and we're going to get some of this blue out of here that's down behind the nozzle. Okay, there we go. Now we're, I see it's starting to get a little bit lighter now. Yep, a little bit lighter. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and spray the remainder of our salt. 
that we have left. And we're just going to blend it in, you know, right over top of uh, where we did the blue. And I'll show you how that comes out. Like I say, the, the one main thing to this is not spraying too much. Um, you want to keep the film thickness as as thin as possible, it gives you a much better um, overall look, and uh, it makes the process a lot easier to do. So, there we go. Okay, we've got our paint sprayed on. So, as far as that part, that's done. So we'll hold it up here again, and that's what it looks like. You can see the bluish yellow color that we did on this side and then we did the actual blue on this side um next step is i like to take the hair dryer again we're going to turn it on and we're going to heat this up a little bit and all we're doing now is just kind of you know speed drying the um the acrylic paint that we just sprayed on here we have that part done now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the salt off the model and i'm just going to use a um, flat brush here for that you can also use your finger on this um, so right now we are ready to go with this a lot this is what a lot of people say takes a whole bunch of time but um that's not true um, as you can see i am wiping across it right now and we are good to go um, so you can use a brush on it if you want to. It does take off the um, the salt. Let me see if I can get up here closer to the camera and get it to focus. Um, there I'm using the brush to take the salt off. And that's the um, effect that you get. And then here on the front, we'll go ahead and I'll just use my finger on this part here. And we'll knock that off, and we'll show you what that looks like. There we go. You can see how subtle that is. Um, you can see the the brown the brownish red primer coming through that upper color. Looks real nice. Now, if you notice back here on this area uh, with the gray primer, notice how bold the uh, color change is. Uh, that's something that you you know want to be aware of as you're doing this technique. Um, to keep everything in scale, um, a lot of times I will not use a gray primer because it tends to, for me personally, it tends to get out of scale. So I like to use the uh, darker primers or a darker undercoat. So now we're just uh, going ahead and scraping the excess uh, salt off of this bluish yellow mess that I made back here that's about a hideous color but good thing it's just a demonstration and the other thing that you want to make sure of is get all of your salt particles off of the model do not leave any salt particles on the model um, even if you have to put a pair of magnifying glasses on to make sure that you've got it all from around the edges and in any recesses or anything like that like I say, make sure you get all the salt off the model. You don't want to leave any on it because it will show up and it kind of ruins the effect at that point. So there we go. I mean, we are pretty much done. Uh, get it here in the camera and see if I can sneak it in there a little bit closer. There you go. That's the peeling paint uh, on the gray primer. And this is the peeling paint technique on the red primer. And you can tell how much more subtle that is than that. This is a little bit more bold, but it depends on what look you're going for. I mean, there's no, you know, really right or wrong way to do it. 
Um, it's just personal preference on what you want the model to look like. So um, there you go. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a very nice technique. It can come out very realistic and um, very simple to do. So if you have any questions or concerns on this technique, um, you know, leave me a comment on the video. I'll be more than glad to help you out if I can. And um, stay tuned for a couple more videos coming up. Uh, one's going to be on photo etch and one's going to be on um, setting models up on a show table for competition. So stay tuned for them. They'll be coming up soon. Like always, this is Hunter from Showtime Studios. I thank you for watching and we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.